So hopefully you've seen my video on uh, multiprocessing and multitasking and multithreading. If you haven't, there's a link to it in the description below. And following that video, some of you have been asking me where does hyperthreading fit into this whole uh, thing. So today I want to look at hyperthreading. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so today there are three types of uh, CPUs that are commonly in use. The first is the single core CPU. So if you look at a system like the Raspberry Pi Zero, that has a single core processor on it, and yet it can run a multitasking operating system like Linux, and it can appear to be doing multiple things at once. It can do multi-threading, but it does that by switching very quickly between the different programs, giving each one a slice of time, and therefore giving the appearance that it's actually doing multiple things at once, whereas in fact it's only doing one thing at once, but it's switching between them very quickly. The second type of processor that we use today is a multi-core uh, system. So we might have a quad-core CPU or a dual-core CPU, and these actually have inside of them two effectively two whole CPUs. Now they share some common buses, they share some common caches, but in terms of fetching instructions from memory, decoding them, executing them, and writing the results back to the memory, each of those CPU cores is completely independent and they function independently. And the operating system can give tasks to one CPU or to the other CPU, and if there's lots going on, then both CPU cores are used. And if you've got a highly multitasking program, then the more CPU cores you have, the better because they can actually do things two things at once or four things at once depending on how many cores there actually are and I demonstrated that in that video that I mentioned. And the third kind of CPU that's used is one with hyperthreading. So what is hyperthreading? Well let's start with the idea of a single core computer with two threads. Now what happens when you have two threads is that some of the front end of the work that the CPU does is duplicated. So normally you'd have this front end stuff that's maybe to do with fetching the instructions and doing some of the initial decode that would actually be at the front of the queue of the pipeline and then as the instruction moves down it then moves into the execution stage. Now by duplicating the initial stuff at the front end, two lots, two queues of instructions can start being formed. Two lots of decodes, two lots of memory fetches and they can start to progress down the pipeline in parallel. But at some point the two pipelines have to merge and it comes back to being just one physical CPU. And because there are these two front ends, they are presented to the operating system as actually two CPUs. So the, the, the OS thinks it's got a, uh, a dual core processor, but in fact it hasn't. It's got a single core processor, but actually with two threads running on it. And of course you can multiply that up, you can have four cores with eight threads and uh, six cores with 12 threads and so on. But in each case, the actual number of execution units that can run an instruction, actually do the thing it needs to do and write back the results is the smaller of the two numbers, the core number. So there's four cores. And when it says eight threads, what that means is there are eight bits at the beginning, eight front ends that allow the initial stages to occur. Earlier this year when I was at San Francisco airport, I was queuing up for the security clearance and I realized that what I saw in front of me was a perfect example of hyperthreading. There were two queues of people and as we were queuing up, we were all putting our baggages onto the conveyor belt and then we had to go through a scanner. But the point was there was only one scanner. So there were two queues and one scanner. And of course what happens is this, is that if one queue was uh, empty or there was less people on it, our queue moved very quickly through that one scanner. If there was a problem in one queue, so there was a delay, someone had a problem with a bag and the queue kind of backed up, well the other queue could just keep on going through that scanner. But most of the time what happens is that both queues function very, very well and then actually you get some contention, some congestion at the queue, at the scanner because the queues are both feeding into it very fast. And this is in fact a perfect example of what hyperthreading is. Each queue, each thread is able to start the decode process fetching some instructions to actually deliver them to the CPU. But at some point, like traffic merging, like these two queues in the airport, they have to come together. And that means that when they come together, unless one queue has been delayed for some reason, then in fact they both have to kind of fight it out and it has to take some from one and some from the other. And that's why it's not the same as having an independent separate core. But it does help in the situation where one queue has been delayed, then the other queue can keep on going. And that's why you get a performance boost, but it's not the same as adding an entire core to the processor.
So the question is, what does that mean for performance? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a rule of thumb. And it very much is a rule of thumb. It does depend on so many factors, including the microarchitecture being used. This changes from one generation to another. Depends on whether it comes from Intel or where it comes from AMD. It depends on factors like the kind of the turbo boost frequencies. It depends on how much internal cache there is. So this really is a generalistic rule, but it is useful to understand the impact of hyperthreading versus cores. So the general rule is this, if you have one core with two threads, those two threads will actually increase the performance by 25%. So it's like having one and a quarter cores. So this means that if you actually have four cores and eight threads, four cores and eight threads is actually the same as having five actual physical cores. It's certainly not the same as having eight physical cores, but performance wise, it's similar to having five cores because each of those extra threads beyond the number of cores gives you a quarter of a CPU core in terms of performance. And that raises then an interesting question. What happens if you have uh, for example, a six core, 12 thread processor compared to an eight core, eight thread processor. And when I say eight core, eight thread, that basically means there's not, there's not two threads at the beginning of each process, they're just one. And so the pipeline is just straight. It goes all the way through. So what's six, 12 versus eight, eight? Well, if we think about it and do the maths, the six, 12 has got the equivalent of seven and a half cores. And the eight, of course, has got eight cores. So an eight core, eight thread processor is faster than a six core, 12 thread processor. Now, I would just like to repeat my caveat. This, of course, is a rule of thumb. Of course, there's gonna be differences between processor X and processor Y running under a certain load that's gonna demonstrate slightly different characteristics than what I've said. But as a general rule, this is a good way to quickly in your head work out the performance implications of the number of cores and the number of threads in any given processor configuration. Okay, so there you have it. There is my explanation of hyperthreading. I hope you found it useful. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. You know what else I'm going to ask you. Please subscribe and please share this video on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.